There's a saying in the bass fishing world, when it comes to dissecting a bass fishery, it's not about finding the good water, it's about eliminating the bad. Standard map study can help you do just that by giving you a detailed overview of the entire lake. But for this video, I'm going to assume that every one of you has done map study to prepare for a day's fishing. What I'm going to show you is a unique set of tools, not papers, that will give you an unparalleled look at your body of water. I feel confident that many of these tools and the hidden features within these tools will be completely new to you, and I'm excited to be able to share with you what I've learned about them and how they've impacted my success. So let's get started. All the tools I'm going to share with you are either software applications you need to have installed or web applications that you view online through your browser. They're completely free and along the way I'll provide the URLs to the websites where you can download and or access these tools and features. We've also created a page at www.bassfishing.com slash map video one that provides all the links and downloads that we show. So feel free to watch this video without interruption, then afterwards visit that page for an overview of this video with all the related links. The first thing I want to talk about is virtual globe software. Now many of you are already very familiar with this category of software, having used the most notable virtual globe application, Google Earth. If you're familiar with Google Earth and have used it many times, good, because I don't want to spend time making this a tutorial on what it is and how to navigate within it. I want to get right to the good stuff that's relevant to anglers using this software. But don't worry if all this stuff is brand new to you. You'll be able to quickly pick up on how it works and at the end we'll provide resources for learning more about these applications. And shortly in this video we're going to be also covering some very interesting features with other applications provided by NASA, GeoGarage, Microsoft, and more. You'll quickly realize that no one application gives you what you want, but by combining all these tools and being able to make sense of them, uh, you have access to powerful information that will allow you to become a better angler. So let's kick things off by diving into Google Earth. And here we are at what's commonly termed the blue marble. Uh, at this point, we can venture to pretty much any part on the Earth uh, using either keyboard or mouse. The navigation functions within Google Earth are outstanding, but like I said, I'm not going to cover navigation. I want to get right to the stuff that's related to bass fishing. We'll provide some resources and at the end uh, that do a great job explaining how to use the mouse and keyboard to navigate quickly uh, inside this software. So just to give you an example of how you can perform some basic fishing reconnaissance, uh, let's zoom into a spot on the Potomac River in Maryland named Piscataway Creek. Uh, I already have this spot queued up here in my places panel, so let's go ahead and zoom in on it. Okay, so here we are at Piscataway Creek on the Potomac River. Uh, you'll notice that there's a marina right here, uh, and that's Fort Washington Marina. This is a marina I've been launching to for, for many years, and so I'm very familiar with these waters. You can see as I move around and browse the creek uh, that the satellite imagery in Google Earth is very detailed, even at these low altitudes. There's a lot to look at and a lot you can learn from. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom out so we can view this creek again in its entirety. Take a look at the eastern end of this cove right here. Uh, you'll see that the outgoing tidal flow is hitting that small secondary point uh, head on and the silt is being swept out and over it, uh, telling me the current is going from right to left, uh, an outgoing tide. If you take a look at the back of Piscataway Creek, uh, you'll also notice a small feeder creek that is dumping fresh, clear water into the muddy backwaters of the main creek. We can be reasonably confident that this too points to an outgoing tide. So knowing what we know now about this creek just from a few quick observations, I now have some clues where I can find some clear water uh, in this creek if I'm going to be fishing in potentially muddy conditions. So let's say I plan on flipping the pilings and docks at Fort Washington Marina. Uh, using Google Earth, um, I can see that there will very likely be clearer water around the middle boat slips on each pier. I know from experience that another very popular and productive spot here in Piscataway Creek is this first small cove at the north mouth. You can see that the back part of this cove is staying clearer than the rest of the creek because of the protection from the outgoing mud uh, by this small secondary point. If I zoom in here, you can see that there's all kinds of visible cover, uh, most notably laydowns along the shoreline. Um, you'll also notice if you come up here that there's an interesting piece of cover uh, that looks man-made. 
Also, because the current is being blocked and a mud line is created, uh, it would be worth checking out this secondary point here. So as you can see, Google Earth can be a very valuable tool for finding potential fishing spots and analyzing water in various conditions. Let's now take a look at some other useful features in Google Earth for anglers. Here we are back at Piscataway Creek on the Potomac. One thing I've noticed is that when looking at the water from a direct overhead view, uh, it's hard to visualize what you see here with what you'll see when you get out on the water. One thing that can make it easier for you is to look at the water uh, in Google Earth at a more natural perspective. Let me give you an example of, of what I'm talking about here. Um, if you hold down the shift key and then hold down your mouse button, Anywhere you drag the mouse will then change your plane of perspective within Google Earth. Now this is extremely valuable because if you're out on the water and you're trying to recall what you saw uh, out in Google, uh, within Google Earth, uh, your mind's going to have a hard time syncing that up uh, and trying to match up what you're seeing in real life to what you saw here. Um, but by looking at things in a more natural perspective, uh, you're much better able to recall this information and, and visualize it in your head when you're out on the boat. A very helpful feature for anglers inside Google Earth is what's called virtual touring. If you're going to be exploring new bodies of water or new areas, virtual touring will allow you to make a quick flyover to see what's there and if any visible cover or structure is available. It's the most effective method for exploring new areas without having to motor around it for hours on end. Let's take a virtual tour of Piscataway Creek here. Uh, you'll need to create what's called a path by clicking this button here. As you can see, it says Add Path. It'll bring up a dialog and give it a name. We'll, we'll name this one Piscataway Tour. All right, and another thing you want to do is click Style and Color. And what I like to do is just drop this, uh, this opacity value down to 30%. Opacity is just another word for transparency. Now before you click OK, um, just go ahead and drag this window out of the way so you, you can begin creating your path. Um, with creeks like this, I like to draw a path just inside the shoreline. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. And a rough outline is really all you need. you hit play, uh, your altitude and field of perspective may be different than what you're seeing here on mine. In fact, it probably will be. So is there a way to get those topographic maps in addition to the stunning satellite imagery? As you can see, this overlays an incredibly detailed contour map uh, over the Potomac River um, right here in Google Earth. In fact, this contour map is better than any... NASA Whirlwind is Google Earth's biggest competitor, and at the surface, it offers the same functionality. But when dealing with topographic contour information, it's above and beyond Google Earth. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, you'll also notice that unlike in Google Earth, uh, you can zoom in as far as you want the, of the topo map. And take a look at that. So is there anything out there that does provide better satellite images than Google Earth? And the answer to that question is yes. Well, let's take a moment to look around uh, using bird eye for a second. We've covered quite a bit, but really we've only began to scratch the surface of all the uses and possibilities here. Let me show you some more applications and added functionality. And we'll, we'll see if you, if you pull things back. Uh, zoom around here. And you can see it's much brighter on this a number. Google Earth has a built-in browser uh, that will automatically load that station's data and information. And it allows you to view and create graphs of both recent and historic. A quote from Kevin Van Dam in a Bassmaster article about how Google Earth, NASA Worldwind, GeoGarage, Virtual Earth, and all their hidden features, there's a case to be made for virtual exploration.